Okay, we're back, and we're joined now by Haseem Rahman Jr. How you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you all for having me. It's a pleasure. Oh, thanks, for, thanks for coming out. Oh, really, yeah. really appreciate it. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Your dad kills me to death all the time, and we work out <laughs> together. And um, you have such a great following. You have on f- Facebook or Instagram. What what kind of numbers do you have of followers? Uh, followers are crazy all over. Uh, I think Instagram, I believe it's like, Four hundred and something thousand. Uh, Twitter's getting close to fifty thousand, and um, those are pretty much the the main two uh, platforms where I have a big following. So tell me this: your followers are who? Who do you think? What kind of not not only are they men or women or they're athletes or they're they're fans? What what are they? Uh, it's a lot of celebrity uh, followers, and um, I think followers from the whole. Uh, uh, crossover boxing uh, fan base. I think, you know, um, people who are interested in crossover boxing and people who are in, um, uh, into YouTube boxing fight scene, that's more of like uh, the the kind of crowd that I've been getting. And, um, people who, uh, at first it was, you know, traditional, just traditional hardcore boxing fans who knew who I was. And then once my name got out there mainstream, it's like, all right, now it's a lot of people that uh, tune into YouTube boxing and that into the uh, crossover boxing scene, seeing regular fighters fight people who are not traditionally from boxing, and then um, you know all all over the world followers come from. It's it's crazy how how people write me from from New Zealand, from China, from Australia, from London, from uh, Paris. It's just like I get love from everywhere. Uh, Mexico is. Uh, Brazil is is so many places, the endless country. And if I left anywhere out. Uh, it's because it's it, an enormous so many. List. Yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> it, it's, That's it, awesome. It's incredible. Um, first of all, I used to ask your dad, how did you? You told me that you're interested in other sports as opposed to just boxing. When you were young, what did you want? What sport did you really want to be good in? Uh, at first, I wanted to play football, and then I got uh, really good at basketball just because of my physical capability. Uh, I had my first dunk in it, my first in-game dunk. I was 13 years old on a 10 foot rim. <laughs> nice. Yeah, so <laughs> I was really advanced physically, but uh, I think I liked the the contact, the football, and I was really into the uh, the, the the style of, of football play. And um, I, I just prefer football. And um, I didn't even like boxing when I first tried it. I didn't like it at all. I ain't want nothing to do with it. Mm. So that's what that's what got me into football. Got me on the football field, and then I seen some some other people have success at boxing. I was like, you know what? Maybe mm, let me try that again. And then when I tried it again, I stuck with it. So did your dad push you in any sport, or nah? He just supported whatever sport I would do. You know, I had basketball games, football games, baseball games, all that growing up. So uh, he would always support me in whatever sport that I that I chose. He actually. Uh, didn't want me to box. He didn't. He didn't want me to box at all when I when I first started out. He mm. was like completely against boxing. Did you, um, uh, did, be, being that he was like the champ and everything when when you were very very young, uh, do you have any memories of of yeah. going there? Oh, he I was in the ring. My, he was in the ring. My dad's entire career. Like, oh, nice. Yeah, okay. He, he started boxing when I was, uh, I believe I was three years old. When oh, started. okay. So by the time he got up there, like I remember going. To Miami mm. and seeing him fight when he was 29 and 0 and seeing him fight David Tua sitting first oh, wow. round. I remember that fight. That was the first time he lost. So yeah. it, it stuck in my head. I remember the whole trip. Oh, and wow. uh, I remember all the fights after that. I have an a excellent recollection of oh, his nice. career. And, I don't know how all, much of that overlapped because I knew you were a young, younger guy. You yeah, know? I was I was about eight or nine years old mm. when he won. The, uh, I was nine years old when he beat Lennox. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I, I remember all of that. And your brother fights too. Yes, yes. I have a younger brother. He remember all of it too. He remember everything we seen. He was only four at the time. Oh wow! Yeah, your your dad is a character. I mean, he <laughs> is. He's bigger than life. I, yeah. I'm, I'm honestly, he's bigger than life, and um, he's proud of you guys. And he gives me a hard time. I said, "We always hard on your your kids like that." And he says, "No, not that hard." <laughs> Tell me, what was like growing up with the Rock, the the Big Rock? Almost, he's not the same Rock he used to be. So. Now he's a little, uh, he's 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 a little more lenient now. Humble, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, a little more lenient now. But back when he was the champ, it was you know, I, I, I 
me and Sharif always say we had it the hardest. We had to deal with the chant rock. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we had to we had to come home with, and you had a bad day at school, you gotta go home to the heavyweight champion of the world. It might not be a pretty night. <laughs> was was he wait, well, I know he's hyper competitive as far as you know to, everything to get, to get to where he has to be, you gotta be hyper competitive. Yeah. But uh, was he the kind of dad that would let you win in anything, or that was just out the window? Nah, yeah. If you get a win over him, it was it was legit. Yeah, huh? it was it was. The, you had to go earn it. You had to earn it. Nice. Uh, it took us, it took, it took us years to be able to beat him in anything. Like to, for, in order for me to beat him in a chess game, it took me. I really had to, uh-huh. and, and that's how it should be. Right, right. I think because I'm not gonna let my son. Just come and beat me. You're going to have to earn that. You're going to have to go, and I'm going to have you thinking about it. Like, he had me thinking about it. Like, man, I got to go. I got to go practice. I got to go read some yeah. chess books. I got to really get get up on right. this because this is something that I can have success at, and I can beat him. I know I can get him. Yeah. So I'm I'm going to work real hard to to be able to get this win over him at chess. Right. And, and show him, like, yeah, I've been, I've been working. And then you can be and confident then, in your skill set that you sharpened it. Exactly. And, yeah. And, and, and go ahead and get the win. But he's still – he still got the upper hand in chess, man. But I can get, I can squeeze a game or two in sometimes. <laughs> but you know, for some, you know, as we work out together, which is so funny, I know sometimes he's struggling, but he's not going to show you that he is tired or struggling. And when he finishes working out, he's working out with me. So oh, this is nothing. He's he, he just wasting my time. This is just too easy. But then I look at his face when he's working out, and he's struggling. But he's not going to let you show it. And I think that's, you know, for him, he just says he believes in himself so much. And even he says, even the fights I lost, Kermit, except some of them, he says, I just didn't have enough time to win. It wasn't a case where he was going to get beat. He just said, a lot of times I just didn't have enough time in that fight to win the fight. So, you know, being around him is, is something else. I, it's, I like to be able to get away from him sometimes <laughs> <laughs> after we finish because he's got something to say to me. But, you know, he, he loves you guys, though. He loves you guys to death. He loves, you know, your, your little daughter came over. No, your little um, sister came over. Mm-hmm. Sweet. You know, your family's so sweet. I said, how are you guys so sweet with Rock being your dad? <laughs> and, they, they, and, the girl, and the ladies and the girls and your family say, oh, he's not that bad to us. That's good. So you said if you have a fight coming up. Uh, yeah, well... Right now, I'm I'm waiting to see which direction uh, my next fight is gonna go in. There's nothing signed yet. I don't have a actual fight on the or like signed contract to go forward. But I I know which direction I would uh, like to go and what I would like to do for uh, for everybody that's been supporting me, man. Last year we had a we had a rough year. Last year it was 0 and 2. I suffered my uh, first two defeats as a professional, and um. I, I, I kind of agree with my dad said. Like, I ain't have enough time. Uh, well, you yeah. were fighting a guy 100 pounds <laughs> over your weight. Uh, yeah. But, but I mean, that's no excuse. I was, I was a, it was a heavyweight fight. So, yeah. you know, that's that to me, that's not an excuse. But it, it is what it is. That man's a big man. Tell me, you were, you're weighing what, 220? I weighed in, for my last fight, I weighed in 226. But what is your normal weight? I walk around, well, for that fight, uh, you remember we was in the gym every morning, yeah, yes. And then towards the end of camp, well, at the end of camp, at the very end of camp, we had to stop doing that because the opponent changed. Yeah. So I was uh I was walking around probably like two seventeen, two fifteen between two fifteen and two seventeen, the week before the fight, and then the fight came, so we had to stop. It, well, the opponent changed, so I go from fighting somebody that's going to be around two hundred five, two hundred ten pounds, now he's going to be. 310 plus. 320. Yeah, 320. He, he weighed, I think, three, 324, 322 or something like that. That's, you know, that's got to be a big challenge when any any opponent changes, much less someone who is physically and, and stylistically is completely different. Yeah, because, uh, you know, preparation prevents proper performance. Uh, proper, proper preparation prevents poor performance. Right. So, uh, you know, you have to prepare – Properly for for a fight like that for whatever comes, huh? Yeah, and, um, but fighting a guy like that, uh, that that big and that uh, overwhelming in the ring, uh, with not having you no know, practice at doing that, right. is, is it can it can be a, a trigger, and um, I just I just felt like had I had the, the the proper training camp, the proper sparring partners, the proper workouts to be. Uh, instead of doing a lot of the light explosive stuff I would have been doing, 
a lot of heavy lifting, a lot of heavy, right. uh, heavy weight stuff. And um, right. I would have came in to fight heavier. I probably would have weighed in 240 if I would have known I was fighting somebody 320 uh, uh, three months in advance. But, you know, it's, it's uh, no excuses. He was the better man yeah. tonight, and I'll see him again the next time. Now, here's my question. Now, for fighters, you're off season or not really preparing. How much staying in shape do you have to do? You know, you never know. Boxing is, is such a beautiful sport because you never know when you're going to get a call. You never know. I just got a call the other day, and um, I, I didn't take it because I just came off of, you know, I had a I had a long year. I had a long year, and they were trying to get me to fight somebody uh, <laughs> pretty notable in, this month. And I was like, nah, let me uh, take my time and do this right, and I'm going to stay this ship the way I need to, it needs to be uh, driven. Who's your manager? But I don't have one. Not right now, not on paper. So you know, you're telling me before the other fight with Jake Paul, you were tell you were supposed to um, fight with him, and we were in the gym. I think we were doing our crunches or something, and you said that you were offered a certain amount of money. And can you explain to people what all the dividing of the money has to go to, and why? When you said to the number to me, the number that you said, I said that sounds like a lot, a lot of money. He says. Well, I don't get all that money. <laughs> Can you explain that to people that really don't know the boxing game? Okay, so uh, depending on your team, uh, but, you know, most people do have managers, promoters, um, advisors. Uh, uh, everybody has a trainer. Everybody has a cut man. Everybody has a second. All these people um, are not there for free. These people get paid, and they get paid. Uh, a lot of them get paid percentages. So, like, uh, for example, if I was getting, let's just say, uh, for example, let's say I was getting a million dollars for the fight, for a fight. So um, out the gate, right, when the bell rings, when you get your million dollars, 10% of that goes straight to the trainer. Trainer? The trainer, the, the, the normal trainer fee is, is usually 10% in boxing. Mm -hmm. um, some people get more, some people get less, some people have agreed on number, don't matter percentage, but usually that's how it goes. So you got to pay the trainer 10%. Then you got to pay uh, your manager. Your manager might get 33 and a third. You, you never know. What the, your manager might get 20%. Um, managers take a big cut because they're the ones who are supposed to uh, uh, provide for the fighter and get the fighter onto, onto the platform that he's at in order to, to, to bring back the big money. Then um, the... I'm just learning this, but the promoter take money out the uh, out the cut from the beginning before you even get your before you even get your check off the gross right uh, off the top. Yeah, huh? right off the top that you don't even know about. Right? Wow. <laughs> uh, and, and I'm just now. This is something I'm just now learning. I'm 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 now that I'm in. Actually, it's happening to me. Mm. And then uh, you know, you got uh, uh, cut man. Your cut man is gonna gonna charge you a fee depending on how good of a cut man you want. Um, you have to pay training camp expenses. If it's, if expenses. It's, uh, if uh, you're going to a, to a fight where you're going to be fighting a pay-per-view fight in front of front of the world, in front of millions of people, you want to prepare properly. You want to you have you're going to need uh, proper housing. You're going to need food. You're going to need to be on a proper diet. You're going to have to pay uh, most likely have to pay a strength and conditioning trainer because your boxing coach can do everything you need him to do in boxing, but you still have to. Uh, 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 prepare your body. So you're going to need uh, a person who's a specialist on preparing your body, a strength and conditioning coach. Now you got to pay your strength and conditioning coach. All, all, all these things, it's not just like you just, you get you get a check and then you walk away with all that money. It's, it don't no, work like and, that. And the government, okay, yeah. give me a question. Do, you, do, do they take off the taxes? Yeah, that's, 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 that's all, that's all before taxes, like before taxes taking off. So you might fight for a million dollars and Wind up walking away with only three hundred thousand, two hundred thousand. You, you may walk. Some people walk away with like one hundred fifty thousand, yeah, and fighting yeah. for a million dollars. And it's like yeah. it may look this way on paper, but it just, it just it it don't boil down to that. That's why you see fighters and they they keep fighting and they keep fighting and, and people are like, man, why is this guy making so much money? And he just keep fighting, and keep fighting, and keep. Fighting. So a lot of people to pay to to get up there to that level and to to to. Retire and be well off. It takes a a, a very rare special set of, set of skills to be able to do that. Yeah, your dad says that he was kind of telling people what he was going to pay them, but yeah. he said he also said that I don't know if it was the manager. He says they all are crooked because they have deals before you even know it with the with the well with the television with everybody else, 
and you don't know about that deal. But he says, I told my so-and-so what I'm going to pay him. I guess that's how he became a champion. He had the kind of power to do that. But until you get to that certain point, I guess you might not be able to have that control or the power to dictate what you're going to pay certain people. Exactly. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm, even if I, I could sit and be in the room and watch it happen to my father, it still don't hit the same until it happened to you. And it's your money. And you're like, wait, well, where did this part of the money go? And they're like, well, this person had a deal uh, with this person. And I'm like, like what? This is all backdoor information to me. I don't. I didn't know nothing about that. I didn't know I was supposed to get this much. And then they wasn't telling me, and they was only telling me I was supposed to get that much. This is stuff that I'm just now being introduced to uh, in boxing, and it's um, it's 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 corrupt, and it's 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 sad, and it, honestly, it should be it should be criminal. And um, we do have the uh, Muhammad Ali Act, and I'm right now actually looking into seeing how that could protect me uh, with my rights as a fighter because you know you don't. I, I I put my life on the line. You know what I'm saying. I, I take I take some big shots, and not to uh, take anything away from somebody who's fighting in the lower division, but I'm fighting in the heavyweight division. Um, so this is this is something where my life is really on the line with every punch. Tell me this: Do you love boxing? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. See, you got to love that sport to to get out there like that. And so, name us name us some of the um, boxes that you really liked. And if you could emulate some of them, because you're a heavyweight, um, tell us some of the p- people that you really liked watching. Uh, heavyweights, heavy or any. First of all, heavyweights, yes, because heavyweights. A, um, you know, obviously, I watched my dad a whole lot. Lennox Lewis, I watched a whole lot. Uh, Chris Bird, uh, Vladimir Klitschko, uh, Deontay Wilder, um, Tyson Fury, uh, Anthony Joshua. These are all, you know, great heavyweights to me. Um, Michael Hunter, um, uh, Alexander Usyk, um, Riddick Bowe, Larry Donald, Larry Holmes, Mike Tyson, Vander Holyfield, uh, and Shannon Van- Briggs. And you know, Vander Holyfield was not a heavyweight. He made himself, because his natural weight, when I met him, he says like 185, 190. Yeah. And he would build himself up mm-hmm. for the fight against maybe Tyson or the other guys. But he really was a light heavy fighting in the heavyweight. Well, he went to he went to cruiserweight, cruiserweight unified yeah. at cruiserweight, and then went up to heavyweight, which is like yeah. that's that's it's a tough task. Oh my god. Do the thing like you love me, and other things like a real G. I don't need nothing you do for me. It's all good, just love me. Do the thing like you love me, and other things like a real G. Did you like the middleweights, like Sugar Ray and Hearns? Yeah, and absolutely. That's why I was like, you, you just mean heavyweights, but Bernard Hopkins, um, mm-hmm. you know, Sugar, Sugar Ray Robinson. Uh, you know, I, I, I love all of boxing. Canelo Alvarez is a, a great middleweight. Triple G is a great middleweight. Uh, Demetrius Andrade, a great middleweight. These are, um, I've been watching the middleweight division for a long time, but I think my favorite division is probably welterweight. Who's in that? Cause right now, Earl Spence Jr., Terrence Crawford, uh, uh, Jerron Ennis, it's, it's, it's pretty packed right now. So do you think it hurts now that everything, like when I was growing up, we had those fights on television. You had Ali on TV. You had even Foreman on TV. You had all the you know great heavyweight champions on, were able, we were able to see them on television. And we got to know them, you know, up close and personal because Howard Cosell was talking about them. But now everything is pay-per-view with the great fighters. 
And if you don't have the money to watch the fight, you don't see it until it comes on YouTube or something like that later on. Do you think that's hurting the game of boxing? Uh, I think it, it all depends on, on, on what you want out of it. Uh, financially, it's, it's not hurting because no. they're getting much more pay-per-view sales. You know, it's not the same as, as it was back then where, you, you know, everybody had access to the same channel. It's, it's not like that, and it's not going to be like that again. And um, I think that uh, if if it's going to change in the direction I think you're saying, I think that the champions need to change, and the champions need to make themselves more accessible to the public, because the, uh, that's what that's what we, we used to have, or that's what was around before, way before my time. Um, when I go back and look, and you see two heavyweights, you see Ali and Frazier sitting on the couch with uh, uh, Howard Cassell, you see uh, uh, four heavyweight champions sitting around the table, you see. Um, people actually coming in and going to the fights like uh, when you when back in the day your next opponent going to your fight that was a thing, you know what I'm saying that was a thing or or if if if, if uh, fighter A and fighter B uh, was fighting and fighter C was getting the winner fighter C would definitely be there and he would be in the ring in the guy's face afterwards like it was uh it was it was it was real it was real fighting and uh, that's what that's what we need to bring back letting people see that you know it's real so. If uh if if Earl Spence has a fight, Terrence Crawford need to be there. If Terrence Crawford had a fight, Earl Spence need to be there. Like it, with, with the same thing was going on right now with Ryan and Tank. Like uh Ryan and Tank uh, are about to be a huge fight. They need to fight, and Shakur and Devin need to be there because they're the next two guys up. They're, they're, it, it, it's really like a division of four people at the uh, lightweight division one one thirty five. So in order to see who the champion is, they gotta fight each other. So. Uh, when, when Tank and uh, Davis fight, I think today was announced they fight uh, April 15th, Devin Haney and Shakur Stevenson need to be there because they up next. And, I mean, not even up next. Uh, Devin's already the champ, so uh, they really got to come see Devin. But Devin should be there, I, I believe, because cause the winner, you know, is going to be coming for him, whether it be at 135 or 140. You know, uh, years ago um, I met um, – Ken Norton, Ali, Frazier, Foreman. Foreman was scary. He wasn't a very nice man back then. But they used to fight every three or four months. Mm -hmm. You know, even if he was champion, Ali fought Frazier, what, three times, I think? You know, and, and they would fight each other. As opposed to nowadays, it seems like guys who are champions fight once a year. And is, is it back because of the money or because they don't want to fight? What is it? What do you think that is? Uh, I think it's a little bit of both. You know, the pay has, you know, back then fighters were probably getting three, four hundred thousand to fight. Now that same fight probably be three, four million dollars. Um, the, the the pay is crazy uh, when you're at the top level now. So that's why the top guys don't have to fight as often. And then um, another thing being that the, um, the game has changed with the, the O. So they want to take as, as minimal risk as possible to, to be able to keep that undefeated uh, mark. And, and until they not undefeated anymore, then you'll see them start trying to fight all the time, all the time, all the time. But um, as long as, if they could be at the top level with the undefeated record and kind of like pick pick which way they're going, then that's what they'll do because that's the blueprint to to make the most money. Helps build the value exactly. over time like that because people want to see you lose. Mm -hmm. So tell <clears> me this: Do you know any of the fighters that want to fight every month? Do you know anybody has that kind of mentality that are good fighters? that really want to fight every month. Now, yeah. I don't mean they fight every month, but no, want to yeah. fight. There's a lot of them. There's a lot. Endless. Endless amount. I can name them all day. Endless amount. Me. Uh, <laughs> my brother, Keith Hunter. Um, uh, it's just it's fighters that, that you could call and uh, you, you call them, you want to fight? Yeah. Yeah, I'll fight. Of course. Um, there's, there's a whole lot of fighters out there. You want to compete, right? Yeah. They yeah you want to be. They want to make their name. name. Uh, a guy named, uh, the first guy that, that came to mind when you, you asked the question, a guy by the name of Michael Fox. Mike Fox ready to go at, at <laughs> any time. He, you call <laughs> Just him. stay he's ready, ready, huh? Yeah. He's <laughs> and real, he stays in shape? He's a, yes. He's a, he's, he's a, a student of the game. He's very professional, and he, he can box. And he's been, um, in, in my honest opinion, he will be a world champion, but he's been through some things in his career that he's getting over, and he's ready. Like, he's he's going to go. I'm, I'm waiting to see him fight again. I'm excited about his career. So how long would it take you to, if they called you and you, it's a fight that you want to do, 
How long would it take you to get in the shape that you think you'd be ready to fight? Uh, depending on weight class and um, for, for a you, fight for heavyweight. For, yeah. I'm, okay. Well, if uh, if it's a heavyweight fight, I would say anywhere between four and six weeks. I would need no between four and six weeks. Four to six weeks, you should be at a minimum amount of time to 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 be in, in in good enough shape to do a heavyweight fight. If, I, if it was gonna be a cruiserweight fight, I would say eight weeks, somewhere between eight to ten weeks. Because you gotta be in gotta, better shape. Well, not not necessarily in better shape, but uh, I need time to properly and safely lose weight. So when when I can lose the weight, I've proven that, but doing it at a uh, at a rate that is safe and um, effective at the same time. That is that would be the key. So I would need a little bit more time to to be able to bring the weight down in a safe manner. So what what does your dad say about when you do you ever ask your dad should I take this fight or what do you think or are you just your own man decide what you want to do or do no this yeah I I pretty much always ask my I think it would be I would be doing myself a disservice if I had you know uh, I have a heavyweight champion of the, the world the former heavyweight champion of the world as a father so. That's, you know, people who are in my position who get off of fights will be, uh, you know, it, it, to get his advice, they would they would pay a lot of money, and I could do it for free. So that's that's that. So why isn't he, well, I, I probably know why. Obviously, why isn't he a manager? <laughs> he might drive you crazy, but. um, I don't think, he, he's not, I, I don't think my dad's interested in that. You know, he just wants to be there for me as a, as a father. And um, give me the best advice that's going to uh, help me take care of my kids, uh, just like he took care of me. I don't think he, um, you know, because we never had anything on paper or even discussed even doing anything on paper, you know. That's my dad. I'm going to always take care of him wherever he needs. He'll always be able to get it from me. And uh, just like I've always been able to rely on him, whatever I need, I've always been able to get it from him. So, you know, we, we don't, we never even discussed uh you know, putting anything on paper like that, but anything, but it, if to, to, to be a manager, it's just, it's just certain things that you got to go about and certain, certain routes you got to go through. Stuff. Just, yeah, mm-hmm. business stuff. And it's just not, that's, that's just not how we ever did it. We never even had a conversation about doing that or doing anything like that. If anything, um, that's just not his lane. That's not what he wants to do. He don't want to be a manager. So if all of a sudden, you hit a good spot. How long would it take you, and how many fights would it take you to get at the point where you're going after a championship? Uh, I would like to fight for a championship, it, and, and it all depends. It all depends. I would like to fight for a championship by the end of next year. So I would think, you know, anywhere between four and six more fights for me. Just me wanting to uh, get out there and stay sharp and get ready and, you know, um, sharpen my tools up, sharpen my skills up. I had a, uh, I had two fights last year. One was a 10-rounder. One was a four-rounder. So I um, was all over the place with that. I like to get on a steady pace, start, start, start fighting a um, uh, steady amount of rounds and um, up the rounds. And uh, I think that, I think that, Given the opportunities that are in front of me, is is very important that I take my time right now and I do it correctly. I I I, I, I will measure twice and cut once instead of going straight out there with the knife and just trying to chop everything down. So, when you think and you visualize in your mind, do you visualize yourself as a champion, a future champion? Absolutely. I don't. I think that if I if I did not believe that I could be the world champion, if I, could, I couldn't be better than whoever it is at the top, whoever is the best, I would, I would definitely co- heavily consider retiring. I wouldn't even want to do it if I couldn't be the best. It's not something that I, um, that, that I enjoy going in there and, and getting hit upside the head. It's just, I love boxing, but I don't love it that much. I could just, I could have just talked about boxing if that was the case. Uh, I believe that, I was I was blessed with skills and with, if I put the work behind it, when I put the work behind it, uh, the the results will show. Um, I don't think that there's there's a fighter better than me um, out there. That's that's just that's just my my belief in myself. I have the ultimate belief in myself. Um, 
there are fighters out there with more skills than me, yes. There's also, there's uh, fighters out there with better reflex than me, yes. But all around, just as a fighter, as a as as a boxer, I just don't feel like uh, me being in the ring. Um, I can be. Uh, I just don't feel like I can be beat, and it's crazy because I lost twice last year. But you know, uh, I feel like I know the reasons behind those losses and. Given another opportunity, uh, I won't. I will not let that happen again. Yeah, you know the saying is: it's not where you've been, not you know where you've been, not where you are, but it's where you're headed, and it's how you believe what's going to happen. So we have you here. I know you watch a lot of fights. Tell me some of the favorite fights you've watched on YouTube or in live, because <laughs> I was watching Hagler and Hearns just last night. We were wa- I was watching that. For, it just came on, so I just looked at. Name me some of the fights that you enjoyed watching. Favorite fight I ever been to, uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. Manny Pacquiao, Eric Morales, first fight, incredible fight, twelve round war. It was crazy. Uh, another fight, uh, obviously, um, Hassan Rockman versus Kali Meehan. That is a that is a great fight to watch. It was highly entertaining. Uh, let's see. Another great fight, uh, Earl Spence versus uh, what's his name, the the guy from London. Uh, well, he may not be. He's, he's from the UK. Earl Spence versus Kell Brook. Uh, what else? Uh, Floyd Mayweather versus Arturo Gotti. Uh, Floyd Mayweather versus Asa De La Hoya. A great fight. Floyd Mayweather versus Miguel Cotto. Great fight. Uh, Floyd Mayweather versus Jose Luis Castillo. One and two. Great fights. Uh, uh, so we know Pernod. you love Floyd Mayweather. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> yes. Pernod, Pernod Do you know Whitaker. him personally? Yes, I was uh, I was mentored by Floyd for for years. Yeah, uh, I've, I've been very close with Floyd before. It seems like okay, you're just so much bigger than he is, but <laughs> but you know what? It, I love him because he believes in himself. His dad was a good fighter. Mm-hmm. His dad was a good fighter. And his and, uncle was a world champ. Yeah, yeah, they were. Rest in peace, Roger. Yeah. So I watched May, Mayweather and. Um, he is what he is, and, he, and he, people want him to lose, and you're right. They either come to see them win or come to see them lose. And um, what kind of personality do you need to get the people behind you or, or against you? Do you ever think about that? It's funny. Someone was someone was uh, talking to me about that uh, yesterday, actually. They were saying, you know, that was my chance to, and they, they feel like I, I'm going to fit in playing the villain. Just because in in my next fight, this uh, hopefully this fight comes through. I hope this guy takes it. I'm not gonna release his name, <laughs> but he's undefeated and he has all knockouts. So this next fight is this guy's really big, especially where he's from. So um, I would be coming in as the villain to upset the undefeated prospect who who has all knockouts. So it would be it's, it's gonna be a, a a great fight if it happens. I hope it happens. And uh, 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 they were saying that they they like me better playing the villain role. They were like, you, I think you're going to play the villain role really well, and you're going to come and upset the party and be the bad guy, and that's going to get you some good traction. And, you know, I hope he's right. I hope, I hope it does work. I hope so, too. You have any other questions, Tio? Yeah, you know? it seems like um, a lot of times you see someone, they've, they've been around, even some guys that have been around much, much longer than you have, and sometimes I looked at it as being on the downside of the career, but you can have uh, one big performance and then all of a sudden it like rockets you to uh, the, the, the height of exposure and puts you right in line. Oh, you ever? This is good. I can oh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry, the end of that question. Um, no, I was saying that w- once, once, you know, you get that, um, is, is that something that you, you think about is like as far as in your preparation, you know, like because you want to maximize what you do when you go out there. Uh, but you, does that ever cross your mind? It's like you know, if this this could, this gets big, then that could really put me on another level. Um, I think you know you always just want to go out there and do your best. That's mm-hmm. that's that's what I'm thinking about. Um, when I, when you look, even myself, I've I've fallen victim victim to it. Looking ahead of 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 what's in front of you, right? You can't underestimate any man, right, in that boxing room because. You you may not you don't know how much he wants it. Yeah. He may actually want it more than you. Right. Excuse me. He may actually want it more than you. So 
but it's up to you to want it enough and be better enough and prepare yourself in a way yeah. that's not going to let him come out on top. It's a battle of wills. Yeah. You know, it's strange. Um, I talk, when I train basketball players, I ask them, if you train very, very hard and you're in tremendous shape, and I said, just let's visualize, you don't get tired in the game at all. I said, how good would you be? Oh, man, I'd be really good. I would score a whole lot of points. They would not play good defense. I, I, then I say to them, why don't you get in that kind of shape? Well, I don't know. That's the first thing they say. But they said, if I'm in good shape, oh, Kermit, I would be really good. I wouldn't be tired. I wouldn't shoot all those jumpers. I'd drive to the hole. Because when people get tired, they want to shoot outside. They don't put the effort. And the same thing in boxing. Do you think how important is top conditioning in a boxer? Is it the same as basketball where they say, oh, I know I can do it now? Mm-hmm. I think it's the same thing. Uh, if, and and to, be, to be honest, it comes down to discipline. Uh, you know, if you have the discipline to, to be a top conditioned fighter and you're not going to find a lot of trouble in the ring if you if you you're if you've mastered your craft and um that's 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 like a key right there uh being in top top condition is 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 a, is a weapon that any fighter would would choose to have you know another thing about boxing and I'm not a you know I just love watching boxing I would never get in the ring I don't have enough courage to get in the ring <laughs> but sometimes I watch fights and it's a lucky punch that ends a fight mm mm-hmm. mhm not and he's not the best fighter, but just he the other guy didn't duck the right time or he was docking and dodging or whatever, and he gets caught with something. But he was a better fighter, but he lost. He got knocked out. Does that happen? I mean, not for you, but just in general. <laughs> can you just you know and just like a, a baseball player I'm over here thinking he's been watching my fights? No, oh, what's going on? You watch. <laughs> no, no, no. I haven't. You know, I watched your dad's fights because mm-hmm. he told me go it's watch. Funny. It. Go, d- when when this is over, when we get some free time, let's go watch my fight, and you'll see, uh, almost exactly like oh, okay. what you said uh, kind of happened. And it was um, it happens, and that's boxing, and that's why it's such a thrilling sport, and it's so exciting, and it's a science because um, something went wrong. The the fighter that was the better fighter, he made a mistake somewhere and got caught, and that's boxing. Um, it's, it's, it's Pacquiao. It's, Remember that yeah. last fight with Pacquiao? Fought, he was beating a guy. And he got hit. Got with, hit and face first on the canvas. And the next without, second later. Yeah. And um, that happens. This is boxing. And um, you, that's why you fight the fights. That's why you fight the fights. And uh, I just, uh, like I said, that's why I love the sport, man. Anything can happen. That's that's why you get in the fight, into the fights. It's like if the Lakers beat the, the Bucks and the Bucks already beat the Celtics, that means the Celtics shouldn't be able to beat the Lakers, and that's not necessarily that's true. true. Yeah. That's very, very true. It's not necessarily right. true in boxing. It's like if, if I fought you and, and I beat you and you already fought him and you beat him, then a lot of people will write him off because I already beat you and you They're beat They're just him. doing that boxing math. Yeah. The but, fight math, right? But then when we fight, and then, it doesn't. then if you come beat me and people are like, oh, it's an upset. But mm-hmm. it, it, that's the beautiful thing about boxing. Any Either man can win. Right. Any night, regardless of of, of skill or, or will or or whatever is on the table before the fight, whatever's on paper, it doesn't matter once that bell rings. Mm. So since you're on here and you're going to be taking this, do you want to say anything to your followers, your fans, or are they excited or tell them about <laughs> your, your your future? Uh, I just uh, I, I want everybody who on the other side, y'all stay over there. Uh, we good on our side, you know, alhamdulillah, we safe, and we coming back stronger, and I promise y'all uh, beautiful performances in 2023, and uh, y'all going to have a lot to talk about, a lot to be proud of, and I thank y'all for sticking with me and supporting me and, and staying tapped in. Thank y'all so much. It's, it's always love over here. Much love. Thank y'all. Well, thank you for coming on today. We appreciate that very much, and um, hey, we're going to follow you. Thank you. And we just going to, we will follow you because your dad's going to tell me anyway, but with good <laughs> luck in everything that you do. We hope you become a champion and then you can come back and be on our show. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm going to here. Yes, yes, like oh, after wow. every fight. That'd be tremendous. Sure and so sure thank you very much. We yep. appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. Thank you.
was happy.